Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. Welcome to this video. It's been a very, very long time since the last time I did a video. I do apologize for that. Um, but I have work commitments now that really make it very, very difficult for me to find any time at all to do videos. Uh, this is just going to be a very, very short little video, uh, but it's taken a long bank holiday weekend here in the UK for me to be able to find the time to do it, which is a little bit sad. I'm hoping that things will settle down and I'll have a little bit more time in the future to do more videos. But for now, this is as much as I can manage. Now, what I thought I'd do in this video is uh, celebrate a synthesizer, well, the synthesizer, that actually got me into doing music tech videos on YouTube in the first place. And it's this one here. It's the Model D from Beringer. Um, now, the reason why I want to talk about this synthesizer is uh, a little bit of trivia, um, which might sort of like make you look at this synth in a whole new light. Maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so there is a live stream on YouTube. It's called the Pro Synth Network Live. Uh, every week they do a live stream. Um, they get some very interesting guests uh, from the music industry uh, to interview as part of that live stream. And it was a few weeks ago that they interviewed a couple of gentlemen from Cherry Audio. Now, Cherry Audio, they make wonderful soft synths, uh, some incredible stuff. They make Voltage Modular, which if you follow my channel, you'll know that I am a software developer who develops software to run under Voltage Modular. Um, and the two gentlemen I'm talking about are Dan Goldstein and Mitchell Sigman. Now, um, I have had the, the, the opportunity and the honor of having a chat to Dan Goldstein before because of my uh, using Voltage Modular. Um, so uh, Dan has got an amazing collection of synthesizers, uh, just incredible, huge collection of synths. Um, and he's got many uh, Model Ds, many vintage Moog Model Ds in his collection. And he's got some reissued Model Ds as well. And he came out with some very interesting facts about the vintage Model D and the reissue. Um, because I think the reason why they were on uh, the ProSynth Network live stream was because they were basically promoting um, their latest product, which is a mini Moog soft synth emulation. Um, and Dan was talking in detail about all the little intricacies and the quirks of these old vintage Model Ds and, and, and trying to choose you know, how to replicate and emulate them because let's face it, from one synth to the next, they're all going to vary in terms of their responses to envelopes and filters and the calibration is gonna be different and all these kind of things. One specific fact really I found very interesting that Dan mentioned because he has a number of reissues. He's got a number of vintage Model Ds and he was describing how the reissue Model D had kind of got it wrong in a few different ways. And he was talking about glide, pitch bend, modulation depth and stuff like that. Now I'm not going to play the live stream. Um, I'll leave a link to it below so that you can see for yourself and listen yourself as to the details it's a long live stream i have to say so i'll actually sort of give you some pointers as to the, the places where to go and listen about the model d specifically uh, but in terms of um the, the 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 ways that the reissue has not been a faithful recreation of the original uh, let's just talk about the glide um now apparently uh the glide is faster going upwards than it is coming down, quite significantly so on a vintage Model D. Um, and Dan reckons that on average, it's 60% faster going up than it is coming down. In fact, he mentions one of his vintage Model Ds is actually twice as fast going up as it is coming down. And it's those kind of little quirks uh, that they really were very, very keen to replicate in their software synthesizer. Um, and it's one of those quirks where the reissue has got it wrong. And that kind of brought me on to my little lowly, cheap Model D here from Beringer. And I thought to myself, I wonder if this has got it wrong as well. So let's find out.
There you go. Draw your own conclusions from that if you want to. All I'm going to say is... I'm just off to Hartlepool to buy some exploding trousers. No, but honestly, I don't like synth snobbery. I really don't. Um, you know, dislike the company all you like. If that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. But don't piss on the products. Not their vintage synth recreations. Honestly. Till the next time, thanks very, very much for watching. Thank you.